Hey guys, Abel here back with another solo episode. And in this one, I would like to talk about something that has been on my mind for a long time, but I haven't really found the right time to talk about this. And the, the topic that I like to talk about is the current state, if you will, of personal development, or rather, is personal development in general just some BS, something that only some smart marketers came up with to sell you some expensive tickets to the to these motivational seminars or to sell you books? Or is it actually something that can add value to our lives? And to me, this is a pretty fascinating topic because through my podcasts and through my interviews, I actually got into contact with a lot of people who are deep into personal development. But I also have a lot of friends and even fam family members who really just cringe over the whole genre of, of self-improvement. And they just view it as this gimmicky concept that has bred an industry full of charlatans. So I think there's definitely a lot to talk about here. And actually the reason why I felt like it was timely to put out this episode is because I recently had on Mr. Mario Tomic uh, for a podcast. And uh, by this time, he has been on my podcast for three total times. And now if you're listening to this and you haven't heard that episode with Mario, it's because uh, at, by the time this episode comes out, uh, that episode with Mario hasn't aired yet. So chances are you don't really know what I'm talking about, but you'll catch up with me uh, just in a second. Um, but I want to do this episode uh, first because I actually had a lot of things on my mind during that interview that I actually didn't get to say simply because we didn't have enough time to go through everything. So basically, view this episode as one where I'll tell you everything that I didn't say in my interview with Mario Tomic that I actually did want to say. So first of all, why did I even come up with this title, Is Personal Development a Scam? Well, one reason I already touched on, there is a lot of differing viewpoints and attitudes about the whole personal development genre in general. I myself actually had a, a recent, I guess, minor fallout with the whole personal development cult. And some of that fallout is due to personal reasons and patterns that I noticed in my own behavior in relation to personal development. And some of that is due to uh, certain behaviors I've seen in others, especially uh, on the internet uh, where I'm interacting with a lot of these people. And to give a little bit of a structure to all of this, the main points I'd like to discuss in these episodes are, for one, why I'm concerned that there is a tendency to view personal development as a substitute for effort and viewing it as a shortcut or a sort of a magic bullet. Uh, the other thing I want to touch on is how I think it's best to think about personal development instead. And I also want to touch on uh, some specific topics such as personal development books. So let's just start with the first point, which is uh, I want to talk about this issue of how people view personal development, where I see a lot of people uh, kind of miss what the whole point of pers personal development is meant to be in the first place. And at this point, I think... I have a good idea of this, or at least I managed to conceptualize it pretty well. So when we think about the whole topic of personal development, I think the best analogy we can use to basically illustrate the role that a lot of the self-help concepts that we read about, like meditation, visualizing, or journaling, play in kind of general success in life is to compare it to the role that supplements play in building a good physique. So let me expand. If we want to break down the recipe for building a good physique, it would basically come down to something like this. Eat the right amount of calories to get the body fat percentage where your body looks good, eat enough protein to support your muscle mass, and do resistance training in the gym in a progressive manner with the right amount of volume for your given needs. And so that will basically be the vast, vast majority of the ball game. And compared to all of this, supplements are like the cherry on top of the icing of, of the cake. Minor, minor considerations. So similarly, if we want to look at succeeding in life, it's a little bit trickier to lay down the winner recipe. But, but it would be something like pick an area or a few areas of, of focus in your life and work really, really hard to get as good as you can in those areas so that you can produce as much value as you can for the world. And 
do this in a progressive manner as well, where you're constantly looking to pick weaknesses in your skill set and are trying to find ways in which you can improve on these areas. Now, of course, for one, that's not a 100% guarantee for success, as there are some people who really do all these things diligently and still don't succeed because of circumstances, lack of talent or bad luck or all of the above. But that would be similar to someone who trains and eats intelligently and still doesn't look great at the end because he has very poor genetics. And of course, there are people who succeed without doing any of these things because they just get a great business idea and it becomes an incredible success overnight. But that's similar to the guy who doesn't have to train and eat intelligently at all and still looks great because he has amazing genetics and just grows like a weed just from picking up a dumbbell. Now, it's not as good of an analogy than the previous one, but you get the point. There will always be exceptions that prove the general rule. So if the recipe is to basically work really hard for a long period of time and do it in a progressive manner where you are constantly trying to improve your skill set, which is a big deal. I mean, this requires a lot of effort. But then how big of a role will things like getting a good morning routine or meditation or visualizing things will play? It will basically be a minor supplementary role that will help you to get by with doing all the hard things that are required for you to do. So just like a good supplement, for example, a good pre-workout that has some good stimulants in it, and occasionally it can help you to push harder in the gym, which can come handy if you've been training for years and don't always feel super pumped to go to the gym. Things like this can help you to find it easier to commit to this long game that goes into building a good physique. Similarly, for most people, I I think I can only tell my opinion as by no means am I there yet, who achieved great success, for the most part, they had to work long hours every day for years and years on end. And that's not easy to do. And after some time, these people probably naturally started to look for certain, for lack of a better term, coping mechanisms to allow them to do this and not burn out. And here, certainly things like getting a good morning routine where you basically put yourself through a nice boot up process and get yourself ready for the day or maybe at the end of the day after maybe hustling your brains out for 10 plus hours and feeling like you're going insane having a nice wind down routine where you you write down things that you're grateful for for example can be very helpful and this also helps explaining for example the whole Tim Ferriss phenomenon, which for the longest time didn't make sense to me. Like, why is this guy so popular where he's rarely telling you any actionable things, like how to come up with a good business idea, how to do this and this. Now, before any of you lose your mind, I know that he does talk about these things too, but far more often he's talking about how he boils his tea in the morning and how he journals after waking up and how he meditates exactly for 25 minutes. But To me, it seems like his audience is not really the wannabe or upcoming entrepreneurs and people who are now looking to become successful. His target audience oftentimes is people who are already well on the way for financial or other success and are looking for strategies to get by there. And speaking of Tim Ferriss, his book, uh, Tools of Titans, which is about the habits and tools that successful people use, basically to me... The biggest takeaway from that book is that there is just no one magic habit or tool that works universally for everyone. Some of them swear by having a very structured morning routine, some don't. Even their life philosophies and how they think of creating a fulfilling life for yourself can differ vastly. Some have more of a follow your passion, do what you love attitude. Others have a bit more pragmatic, uh, more of a Cal Newportian attitude of just, you know, get good at something and it will bring you a lot of fulfillment after some time. Some swear by playing to your strengths and outsource all your weaknesses like Gary Vaynerchuk. Others say the opposite, that you should deliberately try to focus on all the weaknesses that you might have. So in short, there's just not one tactic or life philosophy that universally works for everyone. And I also talked about this with Mario that oftentimes you hear some of these ridiculously successful people being asked some questions about their routines or mental gymnastics to overcome self-doubt or challenges. And you can almost hear this 
awkward silence at the other end. Um, one such example that comes to mind is Mike Matthews, who has put together several multi-million dollar businesses and is just an obscenely successful guy, crazy productive. And sometimes he gets asked about things like, you know, so how do you overcome X challenge or what do you do when you feel discouraged or stuff like that? And although he is ridiculously good at pumping himself up and launching into these long, almost motivational dialogues, during these times, there is this funny kind of awkward silence where he just goes, um, well, I, I don't know. I, I don't really run into these things, to be honest. <laughs> I just work a lot and that's pretty much it. And so here is where the issue comes that far too many of us keep looking for these success habits and routines as a way of substituting the work part of the equation. And this desire, this mindset of looking for the magic trick and the little life hacks is what feeds all these ads that pop up on Facebook. Like I said to Mario, things like, you need to read every single one of these 100 books, or these are the 15 apps that you must get to get more stuff done, or these three morning routines are going to change your life. Subscribe to this newsletter. And I think it's a very insidious, self-sustaining process because for one, on the consumer side, there is a big demand for people to tell us that we can have great results fall down from the skies if we only read this one self-help book or if we just figured out how long to boil or whatever special Asian tea in the morning or how many minutes to meditate. It's very rewarding to hear this because it gives us hope that the breakthrough to some dream life is right around the corner and we only need to organize and tweak a few widgets in our lives be it actual gadgets like apps and checklists or some metaphorical widgets like positive thinking or affirmations. And on the content producer side of things, it's much easier to talk to people about building habits and figure out your why and recommending exercises such as writing down your goals than to actually give practical recommendations, right? It's also true in fitness. It's much harder to tell someone how to modify their progression schemes if they are stuck in a, in a certain lift for four weeks in a row than just to tell them that it's all about consistency and embracing the grind, for example. And this brings us to the point that um, we talked about with Mario that at some point you or I, I shall say, we need to start doing things that we already know works. Like whatever you want to achieve, whether it's body composition goals, academic goals, work goals, you must certainly have at least some idea how to get there. So just start doing that. And if you are in that situation where you know what to do, but you don't do it, then at some point we get to the territory where we may need to face the reality that we just need to enforce some self-discipline and do what it needs to be done. Um, one funny example that comes to mind here is when I was finishing my final thesis in uni and uh, it was just a struggle. I mean, I was lost. I didn't know what to do next. And it turned out to be a lot more complicated project than I thought initially. And I was procrastinating over it every single day. And that was during the time where I was reading some self-help books like Mini Habits, for example, or The Productivity Project. And I was trying to, these different strategies, you know, work schedules, reminders, to-do lists. And I still spent mo most of the day procrastinating. And at some point, I had to make, make the realization that I'm going to run out of time. The deadline for finishing this is approaching more and more every single day. And the reason I'm procrastinating on this is because it's hard as shit. And there is a lot of work to be done. And it will take time. And there is no way I can personal develop my way out of this or hack the system by using mini habits or timing my work blocks in the perfect way or adopting the perfect to-do list. It's a matter of putting my ass in the chair or stand at a standing desk and do the stuff that needs to be done. As And as soon as I could fully commit to this reality, as soon as I gave up on this romantic idea that one day I will just wake up inspired and I will find myself in some 
special Zen state that I somehow engineered for myself with some special productivity technique or by downloading the right task reminder app and was willing to embrace the fact that this is going to suck for a while until it doesn't and then eventually I'll be done with it. I actually started making progress and eventually I did finish it. And so I think this example that happened to me on a micro scale with my thesis kind of reflects the mindset that often goes into all of this, which is I'll take action once I fix myself. And this is the perfect point to bring up the whole New Year's resolution topic. I mean, it's a little bit too late now and I've already put out an episode on on my New Year's uh goals and uh, lessons from the previous year and too many people belabor the point anyway of you know how you should make resolutions and blah 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 but i think the reason why the idea of making resolutions or committing to some goal at x time point be it new years or next monday is so popular is not because or not only because people are lazy and they want to procrastinate but it's because of this delusional thinking that i'll be ready then or by then I'll manage to get into the mindset that is required to take action. And at certain times it can work. Uh, Sometimes you really do manage to pump yourself up enough by that time so you can start taking action. But at other times, the truth is that we will actually never feel ready. Take another example, my podcasts. Basically, I can count on one hand the podcast episodes where I was sitting there pumped up and looking forward to the interviews. I mean, I really do love podcasting and and talking to these amazing people that I interviewed so far, but the actual act of recording is an utter stressor. I mean, at least half of the time, something goes way wrong. There are connection problems. One of our microphones is not working or the recording software crashes. I mean, to give an example, when I first interviewed Berge Fagerli, the first 50 minutes were spent us lip syncing to one another through the screen saying like, can you hear me? Hello, hello, can you hear me? I mean, can you imagine me already feeling like an imposter that this huge name in the industry is taking time to talk to me on my little shitty podcast and then this happens? I mean, my heart was just sinking. And so because of instances like this, basically before 90% of my interviews, my mindset is, God, I hope they cancel. I just don't feel like it right now. But, you know, at this point, I don't even let that affect me because I know that I'll never feel like it because this stuff is stressful until I'll be Joe Rogan who can fly people over to, you know, my private studio and record interviews in person. I'll have to deal with this. So basically, my message here is that waiting for us to get fixed or get ready before taking action is just a self-deluding mindset that I just don't really see working out in practice. Yes, you know, in the movies, it looks cool where the main character goes through some secret training with some old master at some remote place far from everything. And then he or she comes back completely transformed and shocks everyone uh, by what he or she has become. But in real life, it just doesn't work out like that. So now let's talk about the positive side of all of this, or rather, let's give some caveats to everything I've just said. Does this all mean that reading personal development books or taking up meditation or journaling or gratitude lists are a waste of time and are just self-deluding? No, absolutely not. I think that for one, personal development type activities or habits can have sort of a nice self-maintenance kind of rule. And I'd like to expand on this Um, let's face it, we are living in a weird world where we need to face all kinds of strange social pressures, expectations from all kinds of random people. And we put our psychology and minds through a lot of unnatural stress that it was just not really designed to deal with. So I, for example, tend to journal at least every once in a while. And it could be going through things that bother me at the time and just writing about them. Or it could be writing down things I'm grateful for or writing down my longer term goals and perspectives. And I don't do it because I think that it's going to skyrocket me to some amazing success overnight or anything like that. I simply do it to keep myself sane, essentially. I notice that when I don't do it for a long time, I have a tendency to see things a bit too dark 
I tend to get negative about things for no apparent reason. I get irritable. I start not sleeping well and tend to stress. And there's a lot of reasons for this. But the main thing is that I just simply need to get my thoughts out of my head and capture them in some way. So I think that most people can find something like this in their lives. Something that is simple and helps them to operate better. And then this will indirectly translate itself into being more productive and successful. Um, This also brings up the point of daring to individualize these things and adopt these things based on how you tick. So for example, I did cold showers for about three months and I loved it for a while, especially during the summer. Uh, I felt like it gave a nice start to my days. And then after some time, I was like, eh, like, why am I doing this? Uh, On the other hand, meditation, I feel like it could benefit me potentially, uh, simply because I tend to overthink the fuck out of everything. So practicing clearing my thoughts out would probably be of a benefit for me, I feel. Um... The other thing I'd like to mention is that just because someone is cynical about personal development or finds these weird things like morning routines or personal development books laughable, even if he or she is a very accomplished person, that should not discourage you from doing it yourself. Because this is something I've fallen for a lot that, you know, I would meet someone I looked up to who was very successful, accomplished, confident, good communication skills, all of that good stuff. And then when he or she heard that I'm into this kind of stuff, the reaction was kind of like, oh, so you're reading success books. And it was very kind of humiliating. And I I just felt like silly that there's this very impressive person, far more impressive than I am, in fact. And then they don't even do any of this weird stuff that I'm doing to better myself. And, you know, we have to realize, to use a fitness anal- fitness analogy once again, is that it, it would be basically the equivalent of a situation in which some naturally very lean and muscular person who has been lean ever since he was a child and is one of those bastards who just grows like a weed just from picking up a dumbbell in the gym would look at your complex programming strategies and a well-thought-out nutrition plan and would make fun of you because of it, right? That would be ridiculous because they look at what you're doing through their own experience. For them, it was not necessary to do any of this to get where they are, so they assume that it shouldn't be necessary for others either. And while I think most people who have a reasonable understanding of training and nutrition kind of realize quickly that it's ridiculous to throw cookie-cutter training plans and diets to everyone, regardless of their history and their genetics, I feel like this need for a more individual approach when it comes to just general life management and psychological management is not as well accepted. And people seem to have an attitude where they think that everybody should live their life as if they were these, I guess, for lack of a better term, psychologically very blessed individuals. And I think that because we all come from so different backgrounds and we have such different stories, mental baggages from the past that anybody who is commenting on the strategy that someone has to better their own lives is just completely off base. I mean, there's definitely some genetic component to all of this. Some people are probably, because of the way their brain is wired, are just more or less likely to do the right things. Some of us have an easier time to be motivated. Some of us have an easier time to be confident. So when someone looks down on another person because they are reading a book about being more confident, for example, and they think that being confident should come easily for all people, it's really the equivalent of someone ridiculing a guy at the gym because they are doing 10 sets of bicep work in the gym, whereas they their arms grow perfectly fine just from five sets. And then B... Some people, because of the way they have been raised, basically got explicit training in some of the things that you are trying to learn from reading your books. You know, there are are a lot of variables here. The way expectations were set in their families, um, the people surrounding them, life circumstances or challenges they had to go through. I mean, by the time you meet someone in your mid-20s or 30s, You might look at a person who, despite coming from seemingly similar backgrounds as you do, has nothing in common with you. So keep that in mind. I think 
the fact that going to the gym and working out and trying to eat healthy is generally socially appreciated. But then, you know, having routines and rituals in your life to better yourself or even seeking out a mentor or finding a good psychologist that you can talk to is somewhat frowned upon, I think is nothing more than an example of a completely ridiculous social construct that although makes no sense whatsoever, unfortunately has developed and needs to be destroyed as soon as possible. And then lastly, I'd like to briefly touch on personal development books. This is because this is something that I'm kind of on the fence with and I don't have any kind of hard stance on this. So I would be actually uh, very curious as to what you guys think of this. But for one, I actually had a minor fallout recently with personal development books on the whole. I personally just got fed up with how predictable and non-actionable a lot, a lot of these books were. I found it pretty challenging to get any meaningful amount of value out of them. Uh, to be honest, after I read maybe 10 or so of these books, it became more and more rare that I actually found even one golden nugget in these books. Uh, unfortunately, most of the personal development books that I've read follow a pretty gen generic recipe where they give you some really strong intro, which let's face it, it's not that hard to write a strong intro for some personal development book. I mean, when you are talking about people's pain points and insecurities, and then you are waving them the promise of some better life that they could have, and especially if you also include some sort of suggestions for an exercise uh, which they can write down their goals or something similar to that. It's pretty easy to get people's dopamine levels sky high in these book intros. And then comes sort of the middle part of the book, which unfortunately oftentimes is just characterized by an enormous amount of filler text and rehash material from older similar books, which I assume is when a lot of these authors are experiencing a lot of the craziness and sleepless nights that they sometimes talk about after publishing their books because they actually have to come up with some material. And then maybe at the end, they also give you some motivational closure to all of it so that you can actually feel good about yourself for reading the book and you don't feel like your money was wasted. So I see a lot of cliche rehash materials being used in these books and I see a lot of non-actionable pie-in-the-sky concepts thrown around. I see a lot of fillers, unfortunately, where I feel like I'm only reading certain parts of the book because the author had to make sure that the book is at least 200 pages or so. And the issue is that I think in large part, they play to the psychology of this subset of population who are just chasing themselves in circles their whole lives where they feel uninspired for long, long periods of time. And then just before they hit rock bottom, they need something to make themselves feel better for a short while. And they need something or someone to tell them that, um, the future is still open and you can change your life. And that's all a good message overall. And it would be not a problem at all if these books actually gave any kind of actionable tips. But oftentimes they don't. So, you know, that's kind of the dark side of personal development books, in my opinion. But it's important to strongly caveat this with a couple of points. So for one, I think that even these books, which I just talked about, that I just view as kind of flat out packaged motivational junk food, could be of great value for certain people and they could actually benefit greatly from reading them. So for example, in the country I was born and raised in, Hungary, being completely apathetic, cynical and negative about everything, not only is it the norm, but in some sense it's almost trendy, like complaining about things and almost romanticizing about how the entire world is against us, poor, poor people, is basically the elected national sport of the country. So I, I would say that for these people, even reading a book that just rehashes all the cliches of the worst, shittiest quality, motivational, personal development books is a very positive influence. The funny thing is I, I've had this conversation with my best friend actually about a Hungarian motivational speaker who admittedly is saying a lot of non-actionable cliche stuff like, you know, look at the positive things, be grateful, don't be jealous, you can do anything, blah, blah, blah. But my opinion on this is that while, yes, it's non-actionable, it's cliche, but for people who are neck deep into apathy and negativity, it's still a net positive influence. Also, I think that these not so high quality books can be in a way helpful for people to remind themselves of their goals or where they want to go in life 
which is the same reason why a lot of people journal or have some affirmation exercises in the morning or at night. And for others, you know, just simply reading a book before falling asleep with some motivational content can be a good way to remind themselves of the changes they want to make in their lives. You know, sometimes the rush of our everydays can make us forget what our goals are or who we want to be. And reading such a book can be a good reminder in a sense. And then it's important to point out that there are absolute stellar books that fall in the category of personal development, which are not cliches, nor are they non-actionable. Like pretty much all of Cal Newport's books uh, fall in this category, uh, So Good They Can Ignore You, Deep Work, How to Be a High School Superstar, absolutely spot on books. Also, another interesting thing is, is that there are some concepts which uh, personally, at least, I've always found a bit kind of not nonsensical, but a lot of these concepts to me fall in the category of it sounds great in concept, but in practice, I don't really see it working out. So um, concepts such as once you define your values, your actions will follow automatically or that certain behaviors will be too incongruent with these values so you won't do them anymore. I mean, sure, I get where this is coming from. So let's say you define your values as being an inspiration to others or being hardworking or disciplined, blah, blah. And from then on, you will naturally gravitate towards certain behaviors that are congruent with these values. But I mean, how actionable is this? Like, okay, great, you defined your values, but how are you supposed to go forward? What are you supposed to do tomorrow when you wake up? What are the action steps? And I don't think that someone who is just eating popcorn in front of the TV and playing video games would define his values as, I value doing nothing and crunching on popcorn. I think most people have a general idea about what kind of values they should instill in themselves. It's just that the grayness of the everydays kind of churns them up and turns them towards behaviors that are not actually congruent with these values. And there are a lot of other similar things, like if you write down your goals, your actions will become automatic. Like... No, they fucking won't be like any idiot can write down a bunch of goals, but actually being consistent and working towards them in the long term is a whole different story. But anyway, so that's that's one end of the, the spectrum. On the other hand, concepts such as you're the average of the five people around you, even though very often rehashed and it's one of those cliche personal development phrases these days, is actually a pretty good one and it's rather actionable because... Not because simply by being around certain people, you will automatically become like them. But in practice, to be in a position where the people surrounding you in your day-to-day life are accomplished, ambitious, hardworking people, you simply have to find ways to do things that will allow you to be around them. And inevitably, over time, the things you do will have to be also working hard, also being ambitious, also becoming accomplished relative to your own potential. I mean, if you're around these people and you just spend your days doing absolutely nothing to progress towards better things, you will simply get out of their circles because you won't be able to keep up with them. They will be involved in things that you can be involved in, maybe because you're not qualified enough or you don't have the connections or maybe they are invited to places that you won't be because of these lack of connections, etc. So basically where I'm going with this is that personal development books are kind of like expertise or providing service to others, that you don't need to be the top number one expert in the world to be valuable in a subject. You really need to be more knowledgeable on a given topic than one person to be at least of some value. And it's the same thing with these books. At some point, I stopped getting value out of these books, but you might have a completely different experience with this and you might find these greatly valuable because of the reasons I outlined. So I guess in summary, my thoughts on personal development, (laughs) unfortunately, because of the way a lot of people, you know, primarily content producers and other people who benefit from this kind of stuff financially have started to address some aspects of personal development, such as developing habits, such as meditating, such as reading books. It made a lot of people develop a self-deluding mindset, which is oftentimes, unfortunately, um, stems from having an attitude in which people are looking for shortcuts and magic bullets. And this results in kind of missing the forest for the trees and viewing self-personal development as a means to substituting effort as opposed to supplementing your hard efforts. I touched on how this is an insidious and self-sustaining process because of the consumer side, 
because on the consumer side, it's very rewarding to hear that success, fulfillment, and money will fall into your laps if you just manage to adopt the right way of thinking or reiterate the right affirmations every day. And on the consumer side, it's very rewarding to talk about such things because you get people motivated and you don't actually have to give concrete action plans to people, which is, of course, much harder to come up with. And then I touched on how personal development, as it manifests itself in in reading books or meditating or journaling, is in my opinion still greatly valuable to basically keep your head clear and help you to stay on track and not drive yourself insane if you have a tendency to do it. So this was a shorter kind of ranty episode, but I hope you've gotten some value out of it. I certainly felt for a long time like I needed to talk about this, so I hope you actually enjoy this. Hey guys, I just want to tell you again that your inputs for this podcast will help it grow more than anything and your requests, ideas and comments will contribute to awesome content going live on this channel and podcast more than anything. So if you want to contribute, the best thing you can do is to go on Facebook and look up sustainable self-development. You'll find both the page and the Facebook group that is dedicated to discussions and ideas being thrown around. Go there and note down your comments about what kinds of topics or guests you want to be featured on this podcast and YouTube channel in the future. Just keep in mind the general theme of this podcast and my YouTube channel, which is to help people becoming their best selves in terms of lifestyle as it pertains to fitness and general personal development. This podcast is really dedicated to self-improvement, both physically and mentally. So keep that in mind. So thanks again for tuning in and see you next time.